Yes. Uh, I mean, if I were to look anywhere in the world and say, where has been the biggest change in the quality of our relationship in the last nine years, I would say no question it is the Gulf. That you actually had countries like UAE, uh, which I think had not seen a visit after Indira Gandhi. So uh, the, the uh, Gulf in the West, and here again, you know, some of the building blocks existed. You know, there was a diaspora there. There was an energy relationship. But there was the, the political closeness today, the strategic relationship that we have with them today, the, our ability to work with them in their own region and in the uh, circle beyond, all of that has really been uh, the advancement uh, over the last decade. The third direction is southwards, uh, which is to, you know, what we call the Sagar policy, uh, which is to take really an integrated view of the ocean space. Uh, that don't look at it just as Sri Lanka and Maldives or as countries or uh, really as some kind of larger multilateral uh, space. So we have tried from, uh, I would say, uh, Madagascar uh, uh, till, till the Philippines to try to envisage them really as an integrated theater with an integrated policy and to treat it as a neighborhood because you know, in, in diplomacy, I mean, when we use the word extended neighborhood, there were two reasons for it. One, if you look at historical India, this was our neighborhood. Now, after 1947, we ceased to think of it as our neighborhood. So in one way, you could say we were reclaiming history. But there was the other part of it. When you, in our own system, if you tell people it is the neighborhood, they attach a certain primacy to it. They, they give it an attention and resources, which they would not if they didn't have that same concept. And the fourth uh, is, of course, northwards towards Central Asia. That is the more, most recent uh, of the four that we are trying to deal with in an int integrated fashion. Uh, and here too, uh, you know, when, when I talk of neighborhoods, our group interaction, our bilateral interaction, uh, you know, at different levels, the prime minister, the foreign minister, the defense minister, the trade minister. So everybody is wired into their counterparts uh, and the entire system, in a sense, is working these neighborhoods. Now, I'll move to the space beyond, which is the fourth, uh, fourth point I would make, which is, uh, you know, our, our uh, activities and our footprint in Africa has expanded enormously in this period. Uh, out of the 25 odd embassies we have uh, uh, opened in the last uh, uh, nine years, 18 of them are in Africa. In fact, we are today one, uh, one of the countries with the largest diplomatic uh, footprint uh, in Africa. And we have an enormous number of development projects, which I will also mention uh, later on. Uh, but, uh, you know, Often, uh, when we thought of the world beyond our immediate periphery, we thought of Africa. Today, we are, you know, as, as the fifth largest economy, as the most populous country, as a country with growing capabilities. We have started preparing really for what would await us a quarter century from now. So what, what we are doing is not meant for this term or for the next term or even for this decade. We are trying to think 25 years from now what Prime Minister calls Amrit Kal and ask ourselves where are we likely to be in 2047 and what should we be doing now to prepare for it. And certainly in terms of foreign policy, what we need to prepare there is the basis for a global footprint. And a global footprint means uh, being present in Latin America, being present in the Caribbean, being present in, in Central America, engaging with the Pacific Islands, uh, doing something in Mongolia, going to Norway. So how do you actually, uh, you know, set up shop, make yourself visible, do things so that the rest of the world engages with you? That has been actually the, the sort of the bigger strategy uh, towards the rest of the world. And that is why, you know, if, if I were to now uh, try to help you connect the dots, that is why you see Prime Minister going to Papua New Guinea for a Pacific Island Summit, or which is why one of our biggest uh, development projects is actually a refinery in Mongolia, 
or why, as I said, we opened so many uh, African uh, embassies. Or if you look today at our trade uh, in, in, uh, with, with uh, Latin America, uh, it, is, uh, it is close to $50 billion a year. And in this, it's not just the government. We are also, you know, we see business moving. We see, you know, different aspects, different, uh, you know, I even see academics, I see professionals. Uh, so there's a, a kind of a spreading out of India that we are encouraging, we are facilitating, we are guiding. And we hope that that in due course becomes really the foundation uh, for a global footprint. Uh, the fifth uh, 